Laying Sticks on the Fire is what I titled tonight's message. Laying Sticks on the Fire. Okay? When you lay sticks on the fire, vipers come out. Because they, because of the heat, they come out, and they come out to bite you. When you lay sticks on the fire, sometimes you got to lay some sticks on the fire. Sometimes you got to lay some sticks on the fire. Are you laying some sticks on the fire? Well, when you lay sticks on the fire, vipers come out because of the heat, and they come out because of the heat, and they come out to bite you, right? You know, Paul was bit by a poisonous snake, right? It was hanging from his hand. He was bit. So what? It was hanging from his hand. So what? Paul shook it off. Paul shook it off. He shook the snake off into the fire. He shook that snake off into the fire and he was unharmed. Say he was unharmed. Say hallelujah. That's the same kind of power that I have. I'm unharmed. You're unharmed. Thank you, Lord. When you are on fire for God, and I believe that we're all on fire for God, when you are on fire for God, living above reproach, Living in righteousness, right? Living holy for God, sold out for him, you will offend a few people. Maybe just a few, maybe just many. You will offend people. You will offend the casual Christian. Let's put it that way. You will offend the casual Christian. Do you know any casual Christians? Don't name them. But you will offend the casual Christian, and the vipers will rise up against you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's time to lay some sticks on the fire. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts 28. Acts 28 and verse 1. We're going to start with 1. We're going to go through 5. Are we ready? Yes. We're almost there. I know. I tell you, and then I go, are we ready? Yes. Give them a minute. <laughs> Okay, Acts 28, verse 1. Now, when they had escaped, it says, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat. And fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. Whom through, uh, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But Paul shook off the creature, the viper, the poisonous snake. He shook off the creature into the fire and he suffered no harm. They were expecting that he would uh, swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and they saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and they said, oh, then he must be a god instead, right? When you speak truth, it's like laying people on the fire. It's like laying sticks on the fire sometimes when you speak truth with the right heart, with the right attitude, right, with the right motive. It's like laying sticks on the fire. Are, are we all kind of getting familiar as to where I'm going with this? Yeah. Laying some sticks on the fire? Sometimes you just need to lay some sticks on the fire, regardless of the vipers that are going to come out and bite you, because you will not be harmed. Yeah. Hallelujah, right? So when you speak truth, it's like laying sticks. It's like laying people on the fire. The heat of their conviction causes them to bite you. Don't be shocked. The heat of their conviction, because you're laying some truth. You're laying some sticks on the fire. The heat of their conviction causes them to bite you with their words. There's some words that bite. But then we have the word that heals, which is the word of God, right? But you feel the poison. It can stun you. It can make you weep for a moment. It can disorient you. 
but you must see with spiritual eyes. It's time for war, church. You must see with spiritual eyes what's really happening. It is time for war. We don't battle against flesh and blood, and we do know this, right? But against powers and principalities, we must take authority. In Ephesians 6, 12, it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So our fight is not against people, but, it is, but there is a fight. And there is a fight to be won, and you're already on the winning side. You're already victorious. Ephesians 6 and 16 tells us to take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith by which you will be able to quench the fiery darts. The viper's bite is like a fiery dart, but you have the shield of faith to literally block your block their access, Amen. right? And so you're going to quench those fiery darts. You're putting out that fire. There's a fire that needs to put, be put out. There's a fire, meaning the love of God, but then there's a fire that's an assignment of the enemy that needs to be quenched, needs to be put out, and you do so by faith. Put up your shield of faith, right? We know there's different kinds of fires, correct? Yes. The same sticks you laid on the fire, the truth that you spoke, the same sticks that you laid on the fire became fiery darts against you. Don't be shocked. Am I talking to anybody that understands what I'm talking about tonight? Do I, am I talking to somebody that has a spiritual bone in their body, right, and they understand a little bit about what is actually happening? Now, I know that this was an, in Acts 28, there was an actual fire, and there was an actual serpent. That viper actually came up and bit him in the hand. But when you take this and you go spiritually, what could this also be meaning to me? I'm talking about on a spiritual level right now, right? The same sticks that you laid on the fire, the truth that you spoke, became fiery darts against you. Not everyone wants to hear the truth. Not everyone is ready for the truth. But as God says, speak, you speak. When he says, be quiet, you be quiet. Amen. But you got to hear the word of God. You got to hear the voice of God, right? Luke 12 and verse 1 says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So you got to beware of that which is all around. It's hypocrisy, and it wants to shut you up. But if you're carrying truth, you're a truth. You're one that's carrying truth, the word of God, right? Yeah. The hypocrisy, the hypocrites, those that don't want to hear it because they're going to be convicted, they're, 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 their words just might bite. So, so it is. So it's nothing new. So it goes on and on. But we actually are shaking that thing off. We're not letting the bite stay. We're not letting it sting. We're not letting the confusion, the disorientation have its place. We recognize it's time to lay some sticks on the fire. It's time to speak forth that truth. And those people that are trying to come against you with, the, with animosity because of speaking truth, you're shaking them off. You're shaking it off. You're shaking the enemy off. Amen? Amen. Beware of the scribes who like to walk in with long robes and, and get greetings in the marketplace. This is Mark 12, 38. In other words, same thing, hypocrisy. It's the same spirit. They have a hypocritical spirit. They want to look a certain way. They want to act a certain way. But in reality, they're full of dead men's bones. In reality, they're hollow. It's like a shell inwardly. And you come and you speak truth and you have offended them. And what do they do? Retaliate. We'll wake up. There's nothing new under the sun. It happens. But what happens sometimes is we get stung. Amen. Right? Joseph in the Old Testament was also very aware of this, wasn't he? Yeah. He was very aware of this. And a 20-year period brought him into focus with one verse. A 20-year period brought him into focus. And one verse did it. So let's turn our Bibles now to Genesis Genesis 45 and verse 5. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. One verse, to preserve life. One verse. A 20-year period literally brought into focus with one verse. God sent me here. 
God sent you here. God has equipped you to preserve life. God has sent you here. God has equipped you. He has fully, fully equipped you. He has called you up. He has raised you up in the midst of the circumstance so that lives can be saved. Amen. Joseph's calling estranged him from those that were the closest to him for a season. But it was so that he could bring life to them. Let's read, let's read still um, Genesis 45. But I want to read from 1 through, through 8. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood with him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one, so yeah, no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. You guys remember the story? Sold into slavery, you know, Pharaoh's house. And so his brothers come back after all these years. He says, Everyone leaves, right? No, so no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He was going to let them know who he was. He's not dead. He was very, very well alive. God elevated and promoted him. Amen. And he wept. Instead of a spirit of retaliation, he wept aloud. The Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh, they heard it. That's a lot of pain. Amen. Verse 3, then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. They didn't recognize him. I am Joseph. Does my father still live? What was the very first question? The ache of his heart. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. Yeah, they were full of fear. They were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near. Joseph could have said a lot of other things, church. He said, please come near to me. So they came near and he said, I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into Egypt. He wasn't trying to sugarcoat it. Oh, it's not a big deal what you did. Oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Sometimes it is a big deal. You notice how we spoke to the issue? It is a big deal. Stop minimizing what needs to be spoken. It is a big deal. He spoke it. He says, please come near to me. So they came near and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, he says, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. So he wasn't denying what they did, but he had already forgiven. So he said, don't be angry with yourselves. For God sent me before you to preserve life. God spoke this revelatory word to him. He knew that he was sent before to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land. And he says, and there, there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing or harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here. Hallelujah. I love this. He's like, you don't have that much power. Let me just tell you where the real power comes from. He says, so now it was, verse 8. Are we all reading verse 8? So now it was not, not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all of his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. He is saying, yeah, you may have thought that you did what you did. And in one aspect you did. But God allowed it and he elevated me and promoted me. So in reality, God sent me ahead of you to save lives. Lives need to be saved. Of course the viper is going to rise up and, and bite. But you have been called. Joseph was called. Joseph was called and he was ridiculed. He was mocked. He was slandered. He was betrayed. The list goes on and on and on as to what happened with Joseph. But yet Joseph made sure that his heart was seeking the king of kings and the Lord of lords, even in that heathen land. And he spoke to the Lord and he made sure his heart was hard. And I'm sure he had a process of what he had to go through. But he got there. Say he got there. And when he got there, when those brothers came back, this could have been a completely different story, but the grace of God, the love of God, the provision of God had already happened in him, so he can now give out what he also received. Amen. Right? And that's important. You haven't been rejected. Some of you feel rejected by a person or people. You haven't been rejected. God is preserving you. You got to flip it. You have not been rejected. God is preserving you. He is calling you forward to the front lines. It may feel like rejection. It may feel like all the pain and all the hurt. But in reality, God is entrusting you with more Amen. of him. Souls to be healed and saved and set free. 
Are you willing to take that and walk in that calling? So you haven't been rejected. You've actually, God has been preserving you. Yes, there's mockery. Yes, there's slander. There's misjudgments. But remember, it's their conviction talking. You're going to walk holy. It's their conviction talking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is their conviction talking. So you're not going to be a party to their conviction and subdue or lower your standard. You're going to keep the word of God in your mouth, speaking truth with the love of God. Amen? Because here at the very tail end in chapter 50, I say verse, chapter 50, verse 19. Chapter 50, verse 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. I love it because here he is again. He's comforting them. Well, because they had good reason to be afraid. He says, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? And you're not either. You're not in the place of God. So let the judgment drop off your heart. Yes, you're speaking truth. Yes, you're being, you're being pummeled for it. You're not in the place of God. Am I in the place of God? That's what Joseph said. Do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant it, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. God is bringing forth those that he has called. And he needs to use warriors that are, they're not afraid. They're unafraid of the battle. They have courage and they're sold out. Those that are sold out to walk uprightly before the Lord, regardless of the cost. There's a cost. And we are to pick up our cross and we're to walk. There is a cost. There's a cost for the call. There's a cost for the anointing. There is a cost. You know, Jesus freely gave, yes, salvation. But to walk out your salvation in fear and trembling, there is a cost. But there's grace, his grace, which is sufficient. But it's something we must learn to walk in and walk out. Because there are lives that are at stake. And those lives, God has entrusted into your hands. And everyone has different people, but there are lives that God is entrusting you. So he says, therefore, verse 21, do not be afraid. I will provide for you. He's telling this to his brothers. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. He didn't shake. He didn't, he didn't shrink back from the truth. But when the opportunity presented itself and God disclosed who he was, in the, in the spiritual realm. Now, of course, with him, it was the physical realm. But with you, when, when the opportunity comes forth and God reveals to them who you are in the spiritual realm and why God has used you in the way that he has used you, it will all make sense. But if you back down and if you back up and if you cower, you know God will use someone else. He's looking for one that is a, a valiant army, one, a person that will not shrink back, right? One with, like, like Daniel with the spirit of excellence, correct? So God sent me, verse uh, Genesis 45 and 5. God sent me before you to preserve life. Well, what does that look like? God sent you. God sent you. He sent you ahead of a lot of people. In other words, you received the Lord. You walked, you grew. And you spoke truth, and it wasn't always understood or even liked, and you were persecuted for it. What does God sent me ahead of you look like? Well, it can look different depending on the season that you're in, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes it looks like, wow, you're strong. You've got purpose. You're unshakable. Sometimes it looks like these things, right? It looks like, wow, like, you know, nothing moves them, right? But other times it doesn't look like that. There are times it doesn't look like that. Sometimes there's, there's questioning. You, you question you, your own judgment. You know, sometimes you, you, feel, you can feel the rejection and you feel rejected as well. So you'll feel alone. You'll feel misunderstood. You'll feel misaligned. You're, you know, slandered, mocked. Sometimes you will feel just like Paul felt the bite. He felt the bite. Yeah, he shook it off, but he was bit. Let's not forget. And it was a poisonous snake, let's not forget. 
which means this venomous snake wanted to bring poison throughout his body. But he quickly did what he knew to do. Sometimes you're really, really strong, and other times you feel the effects. Regardless, we need to learn to shake it off. Are we all hearing? You feel the attacks like an arrow laced with venom, and it's like, it's like striking or, or stinging you, right? It's trying to disorient you. But we're going to learn to get back up if you haven't already. We're going to learn to get back up from those fatal word curses. People say words can't hurt you, but in reality they can if you let them. So you will learn how to get up from any fatal word curse, and you're going to shake them off just like Paul shook off that viper just like he shook off that serpent's bite. He said, oh, no, no poison is going to be allowed to come into my body. It is your job to do this. You must do this. Rise up and do this. We know that the word of the Lord tells us, no weapon formed against me, against you, shall prosper in Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon. That means none whatsoever. But it's going to seem real, isn't it? That weapon is going to seem real. That sting is going to seem very real. And sometimes that sting is so, so great, you need to call someone and help and get help, you know, with prayer, right? So you do so. You do so. Because we are the army of Christ and we have to join together. But Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Church, say it with me. No weapon formed against me. Make it personal. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. None, none, none whatsoever. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I shall condemn. I'm condemning those judgmental tongues, those judgmental words that want to come against truth. When you know that you're walking before the Lord and your heart is right before God and you're being falsely accused and, and judged in a wrong way and it hurts because words are being spewed your way, let me tell you, either you're going to be strong and you say, nope, not allowing that, or you might feel weak at that moment. But either way, you got to find a way to get back up and stand firm, stand in the authority, let the shield of faith, which we spoke about in Ephesians, uh, be what you pick up and say, I've got the shield of faith, which is the word of God, and that word is literally just like that Teflon coating, coating all around me. It's not going to have that enemy's assignment will not penetrate. Do we hear? Are we hearing? So important that we do this. So in Deuteronomy 28, 7, those spirits that came against you in one direction, how many directions are they going to flee? Seven ways. They come against you in one direction. They're going to flee in seven ways. You, got number. you might be saying, no, they're coming against me in like multiple ways. It's not just one way. Do the math. 14 ways, 28 ways. Do the math. Hey, if one can put to flight, put the flight 1,000, 2, 10,000, if you got all these different assignments coming against you, great. They got to go even, they got to disperse even more then because you remember who you are and your calling in Christ. You remember that you were anointed to strike those things down, to shake them off. You remember that you've been bold, bought with the blood of Jesus to walk boldly for him. We have to put ourselves in remembrance of these things. So we're going to stand our ground. The minute that you do this, all of a sudden the sting is gone. The minute that you do this, all of a sudden the, the, uh, the, the opposition, the oppression, the, just the heaviness, it's gone, you guys. It's gone. The enemy was banking on you, just letting it stay there for days, days on end, plaguing your mind, lying to you, getting your emotions all down, discouraged making bad decisions in the process, wasting time. We're not here to waste time. Are we going to waste time? No. no more. No more time wasting. So we're going to stand our grounds, mighty warriors in the faith. Say, I'm standing my ground. I'm standing for truth. Protect your spirit. You have to protect your spirit against the assaults that are launched your way. And if you think that there are no assaults, launched your way, then you don't understand spiritual warfare. There are assaults constantly launched against us. But it's not like we're afraid of it, but you have to be aware of it. Protect your spirit, which is the spirit of God in you. Know who you are, what you carry. 
And know that God has given you the authority as a believer in Christ to strongly stand in his presence. Joseph had sight. He had sight where others around him were blind. In re I'm referring to his brothers in the beginning. Joseph has sight. He had dreams. He had a vision. He spoke that vision. His brothers were blinded to what was really happening and what was being spoken. Same is true today. Do you have sight? I hope so. When you speak that sight, sometimes those around you are blind. They can't see what you see. And it causes ridicule. It causes the assignments to be launched. It causes those word curses. It causes the bite. But you're going to lay some sticks on the fire. You got to lay that, those sticks on the fire. You got to speak forth that truth. And when the conviction in their heart starts to heat up and they try to bite you back, they try to, they try to bite and that bite stings, it hurts, you're not going to let it. You're going to shake it off. Say, I'm going to shake it off because your sight has a purpose. In other words, your vision has a purpose. God's purpose in your life. And we need to make sure that we walk in that purpose and not allow it to shrink, shrivel up, or die, which is what the enemy wants it to. But your sight has a purpose. I want you to say that. My sight has a purpose. And the pain that it may bring is part of the process, you guys. The pain that your vision, your sight may bring because of the assaults against you, that pain is part of the process. It's part of the process to mold you, to make you strong, to raise you up as a mighty warrior, literally to cause you to be so strong that just like Paul, the moment that it happened and it's something so horrific, you don't miss a beat. You just shake that thing off. You just shake it off, and a matter of fact, you go running after the one you see that has been bit, and you go help them shake it off. And then together, you go after the others that you see that have been bit, and you help them shake it off. That's what we're called to do for one another. That's what we're supposed to do for ourselves. That's what we're called to do for one another. Does this make sense? Like, are we hearing what I'm saying tonight? Because this is important that we remind ourselves uh, we have been called by God and we've been equipped by him. And, and we are not going to shrink back because we're not of that camp. We're not of those that are shrinking back anyways, right? right. You know, and the rewards are, are, are great. Yes, they're eternal. But beyond the, the fact that they are eternal, God's rewards. But he wants to reward you today, today, like currently. He wants to reward you now in this life. He wants to reward you now in this life. And that reward, well, there's so many of them, but, but for you to walk as one that you're going to be able, people will say, wow, you know, they're a safe person. They're strong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I know I can go to them for prayer. I know I can learn and glean from them. That's what we need to be. Somebody that, that people see as, well, this is a mature saint. This is a mature person. Even though they continue to get bit, it's like they weren't bit. It's like the poison doesn't work against them. Poison shouldn't work against you. Not Christians. The poison shouldn't work against a Christian that knows who they are in Christ. In Mark 16, it talks about that. Come on, you, you can drink poison. It's not going to hurt you. In other words, you, those assignments of the enemy that come against you, it's not going to hurt you. That kind of poison. We're not talking about literal poison to drink. We're talking about the assignments, spiritually speaking, right now. So you're rising up in strength. You're rising up in the faith of God. You're rising up in his power. You know, some of you right now at this very moment need to cast some things off. Because I can see it on you. There's some witchcraft. There's some heaviness. We're just going to have you do it right now. Just start to pray and Pray in your heavenly language. Just start to pray in your heavenly language. And as you do that, out loud, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. We're in church. This is what we do. We pray in the Holy Ghost. Right? So start to pray in the Spirit and get loud. I want you to get loud. Somehow when you get loud sometimes, it's just your confidence just grows and you can pray things that you wouldn't have prayed when it was silent in the room. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for an incredible, incredible night. Thank you that your word is going forth and that your people are getting set free right now. Thank you, Father. Now I decree, and I want you to start telling the devil to go as well. Shake it off means command those things to go. Shake it off means you issue that, you, you issue right now that command. You have to make those decrees in the name of Jesus. So right now I decree over every one of you right now, every place where there is a viper snake that has bit you, where there's a viper, where there's poison that's trying to go through your body, and you don't know why you're subdued. You feel subdued, but you don't know why. You feel like there's an assignment. You were stung somehow. You can like, what is this? I feel like I was just in some stupor. I rebuke it right now. And I command it to come off of you. Every spirit of witchcraft has to come off of you now in the name of Jesus. Every place where you're stagnant and you're stuck and you don't understand, well, right now it goes in Jesus' name. It's spirits of oppression, depression. Leave them now in Jesus' name. Leave them now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every place where there is that that judgment being spoken against them, gossip and slander, I command it to come off. It breaks now. It breaks now. It has no power over them. It breaks off of them now. Father, familiar soul ties, even just of being with people that they shouldn't have been with or people they knew they needed to be with, but they knew it would... It would be a problem, but yet you were with them. Lord, we separate those ungodly soul ties right now. We send back to them what belongs to them, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We call back what belongs to us, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, using the shield of faith. I want you to activate your faith. I want you to pray. Get louder. Get louder. Get louder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. No spirit of witchcraft uh, has its place here, has its place in your lives. No spirit of manipulation has its way in your lives. You are strong. You are bold for Christ. He's equipped you. You will do all things uh, in and through Christ who has strengthened you, continues to strengthen you. You're not shrinking back. You've been bought with a price, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Father for a holy turnaround. Thank you, Father. We're stronger when we leave than we were when we came in. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Baptizing us with the Spirit of the living God and with fire. We are being baptized right now with more boldness, more ho holy boldness upon our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done and continue to do. Thank you. Now just lift your hands up and say, now, Father, yes, Lord, I receive. I receive from you, Lord Jesus. I receive right now that incredible downpour from the Spirit of God. Lord, fill me right now. I thank you that I'm bold for you. I thank you, Lord God, there's no fear in me. Perfect love casts out fear. I thank you, Lord God, I'm one that is is going to walk in confident, Lord, confident trust in you, Jesus, because you're trustworthy. So right now I decree over them, each and every one of them, Lord, that any bite right now loses its power. Any, any poison loses its sting. It loses right now all control off of your life. You are going to walk out of this place stronger than ever before, saved, healed, and delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.